Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror PSA presented by Scary Nerd, and as always, we are your hosts. I'm Paul. I'm Saul. And I'm Angie. The following is a public service announcement. Welcome back to the Horror PSA, everyone. We are having a very special uh, South by Southwest recap edition. Um, Something a little different we're going to be doing today. Yeah, we randomly went to South by Southwest Films Festival over this last weekend, so we got to see some pretty exciting... Oh, Paul and I got to see some pretty exciting new horror films. I got to see um, two that Angie didn't get to see, so I'm pretty excited about that. South by Southwest is a very expansive film festival. And expensive. And expensive. Expensive and expensive. I bet. I bet, because what? It's... What? San Antonio? Houston? Austin. Austin. Austin, there you go. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we have press passes, so we're more than happy to go. Yeah. And got to see some great, great movies. Uh, It was a lot of fun, and I think the thing about it is it was our first time. We didn't know what to expect. I've been trying to, like, read up on stuff and follow, you know, people on Twitter that are like, you know, here's tips and this and that. But everyone that we talked to was also like, this is kind of, it's not the same. It's a little bit different. They're still trying to, you know, it's not full capacity. It's not fully back yet. They're still trying to get everything back to normal when it comes to it. Yeah, it's it's it was a weird year. Everyone said, even people that have been gone for many many years. So yeah, it well, was... I think it's going to be like that for a while though, because like I mean, outside of a few other things, this is like probably what one of the bigger things that's finally happening again. Like minus all the cons and everything else. Yeah, the the big things are starting to finally come back, and I it was definitely evident. I think with the attendance, because there were a ton of people, there were a ton of people trying to get into every event, and so I, I think that just speaks to how how much people miss these kinds of events. Well, they only showed X twice, and it was yeah. both, both times it was in a very small theater. Um, the first time that we saw, we saw it the first time they showed it along um, with about two hundred other people, because I think that theater, I think, only, yeah, that I think theater they said two hundred and thirty seven. Fi- yeah, that was the like max that. capacity. So if you take out, you know, the crew and some of the actors that showed up. Um, then yeah, it's maybe about two hundred plus, a little over there, is actual moviegoers. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna pay the part of asking the questions about what they experienced because I didn't get to go. So overall, how many movies did you guys get to watch? We got to watch a couple different things. We also got to see some premieres of um, a couple sci-fi shows and a true crime show. Uh, Paul got to go to the premiere of the Halo. At, uh, the Halo series. I got to actually oh, do. Yeah. I got to actually do the red carpet for Halo. Nice. And I talked to Pablo Schreiber, who is a very tall man. He's actually like six five. He does Jeez. not look six five on TV. And Pablo Jeez. Schreiber is porn staff. Yeah, so like he did not look six five standing all the next to those tall or next to those short girls in the prison in Orange Is the New Black. So yeah, no. Pablo porn staff Schreiber is who I yes. talked to, and mm-hmm. yeah, um, I was like. How, what's it like to play Master Chief? And he was like, it's fucking amazing. Well, he didn't say fucking amazing, but he was like, it's amazing. Um, yeah, it was great. It was awesome. Uh, the show, I will say, I guess we're just starting with Halo. Let's we'll we'll dive into Halo. 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 Um, I talked to the executive producers, and they were both kind of like, um, you know, we wanted to make a world that was more applicable than just to you know video gamers. Yeah. So it's like we have a real human story. They, they talked a lot about hope and humanity And how, um, you know, it's just normal people caught up in this war. And they're like, you know, and that's, you know, not to compare the things. He's like, but that's, you know, something that's very relevant to our political climate, our just world right now. Yeah. Um, I will say that, you know, if you're not a fan of the game or you never played the game, you don't have to be to get into the story. Well, I think the main thing they're going to be drawn on is anybody who was a fan of the game. Because I have fond memories of the game. Because the only thing I... Re- the fond memories I have of the game is pretty much having my friends come over and us drinking, getting drunk off our asses, playing the See, game. See, they, they really wanted to play on the nostalgia of the game and also bring in like a real you know story element to it. So yeah. you could be... So if you're not a fan, I think the one of the executive producers was like... I want to make a show that my wife would watch and, you know, her never having played the games or never, you know, having any interest in any of that, but it's still entertaining for her. Well, and like, I, I do have to say it is surprisingly fucking gory. Hmm. But well, like you said, because the, they the, start off with with, you know, this colony getting yeah. attacked and it's like, OK, we're jump right into it. And I'm like, holy shit, they just blew that alien's fucking head off. Like, huh. yeah. It is gory than you would think. See, and that's something I'm looking for. Like you said, to me, the what's going to get me interested and hooked on the show is just basically nostalgia because it's a game that I played into 
my late teens, early 20s, so I, that's already tickling my nostalgia buttons where it's like, I gotta see this now. And the fact that it's actually gonna be a show is what's, I think, gonna be the positive of it. It's it's very well made. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of action. I mean, I hope they stick with the gore throughout because there was some of the, the the fighting scenes. I'm like, wow. Like, yeah, I wasn't because even people in the in the theater were like, the first time someone's head blown off, yeah. people audibly were like, holy shit! They're like in there. the theater, yeah, they're like, they're yeah. Going like there. people were surprised. We're like, all right, we're on board now. And you saw what? Just the first episode is what they they seen? showed the first episode. Yeah. Okay. And so, I think yeah. that comes out um, later this month on Showtime. I, I think. think no, no, so. that's a Paramount Plus show. Paramount, excuse me. Okay. Paramount Plus, and um, we'll write up in the in the description of the things everything when everything comes out. But that is a Paramount Plus show. It's coming out. Either this month or next month. So okay. definitely look look for that if you want some good sci fi, gory. March twenty you fourth. Know, March twenty fourth. March twenty fourth. Right. A so lot of soon. things. Are, yeah. So yeah. next yeah, Thursday. Really next Thursday. Then yeah. Yeah. Yep. That one was good. Um, the whole theme of people needing people and like relevant themes in the world was yeah. kind of a thing this year, and I think. A lot of that's going to come out of the pandemic is just people needing people and being alone and yeah, finding I, yourself. But another one we saw, another uh, TV show that we got to um, to go to the premiere was a Showtime series called The Man Who Fell to Earth. Okay. And it's a sci-fi series, and it's um, based on the book that was also a movie that starred David Bowie. So that's might be where you've heard the name from. I thought I heard that name. Before. Yeah. That's why I was like, hmm, I know I've heard this, but where? But and it's yeah. um, it also it stars Naomi Harris and what's his name? I'm gonna probably butcher this, but I think it's Chiwetel Ojafor. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, and Bill Nye. And Bill Nye, which she got a pick with Naomi Harris. I got I a did. pick with Bill yes. Nye. I yes. also got a chance to tell Naomi Harris how much I loved her in 28 Days Later. I was like, you're the one of the biggest I forget badasses. that she's in that. Yes. I forget that she's and, in and that. And oddly enough, she was Calypso and he was Davy Jones. Yes. Yeah. So, and they were in this show together. Yeah. Again, so. so, yeah. But it's um it's based about it's based off of the sci-fi book where an alien basically comes to Earth to try to save his own species. And a lot of the themes in it are climate change and, you know, because his world, yeah, his climate yeah. is changing and he, we're having the same problems and like that kind of. There's something thing. going on in their planet that he needs to like fix. And it's something having to do with like energy and stuff like this. And like it's hmm. it's like tearing his planet apart. So he has to come here to try and fix it with Naomi Harris's character, who used to be like a scientist. And now she's just like a broke person in like yeah. was it New Mexico or Texas. Yeah, it's I think? New Mexico, yeah. I believe. But yeah, that one also had a, a scene in the first because we got to see this first two episodes of that okay. one. Yeah, and I'm hooked. Uh, I'm hooked. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, like, it is it's, amazing. It's expansive because it's beautiful. It's yes, a, it's a we, beautifully yeah, done sci-fi we, series. We got to see it on a huge. Um, I mean, uh, it was a huge screen in like 4K. You know, in a, yeah. in, nice. in a big exhibit hall. Okay. And they showed us the first two episodes, and I'm like, the CGI is fucking amazing. Yes, it's gorgeous. Like they have spent money on the show. I mean, you you have you have all these top quality actors, and then like yeah. you're not gonna slouch on the fucking visuals if you're gonna do that. So it's like. It looks amazing and like it's just it hooks you right away. And it's it's very funny because I get um, I get almost like Starman kind of references because okay. he comes and he kind of assumes the, the form of a human. Yeah. And he has to learn everything as he's going like he's listening to people talk and that's how he learns to talk. And like it reminded me a lot of Starman and okay. uh, just like the little comedic parts here and there and just okay. him mimicking other people and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to figure everything out. Yeah. yeah. A, a lot of fun. Like I said, the CGI was great. The acting is top quality. Like there it's is funny. Um, it's yeah. yeah I mean, it's got intense action sequences. There's a, a pretty brutal fight scene in the first two episodes um, that ends with a lot of blood, actually. So it's a it's definitely like I said it's expansive it's genre bending it's it's all kinds of all over the place which is a lot of things I think at South yeah. by Southwest and this comes out on Showtime this one I believe yes, this, this is, one a is a Showtime series Showtime. and I want to think that I want to say this one this is one of the ones that comes out in like mid to late April oh, okay um, I really feel like I don't know if South by Southwest did this you know purposefully or if it's just how the the things worked out but I, I really feel like a lot of the movies really had kind of the same underlying messages of like humanity and hope and like you know the the need to kind of come together for yeah. certain things and stuff like that so and it wasn't you know i, I really didn't see any that were too preachy because like even in this one mm -hmm. that's the central theme of it but it's like it's done in a science fiction way it's like you know he's trying to save his home planet you know and yeah and it's you know you get sucked into the story without you know feeling like you're being preached to and i think a lot of these films have those messages but didn't preach to you the whole time okay so they weren't too too preachy it was just 
hey, here's this. It's just it's 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 part of the story. Yeah. So it's like here's the message that's part of these characters' lives, and yeah. it's like you know that's and what the they need story, to do. The story focuses on the humanness and the connection between, like how there's an actual connection between this alien and this human. Okay. And so it it's kind of like. They they are you know a fish out of water and it's it's really different but he still is able to convince her because he's having the same kind of experience as she's having. Okay. There's a line in the trailer and I won't I will, I'll say it because it's in the trailer and you can see it but um there's a line where um she kind of realizes that Naomi Harris's character she realizes that he's an actual alien she's like okay. she's like I can't believe I'm talking to an alien and he goes well so am I. Yeah, and I'm like, well, oh, yeah, that kind of makes you think, you know, like, yeah, because you do, you forget for a second, like, oh shit, I am the alien to you, mm-hmm. you know, like, okay. Well, it's one of those things that always gets me too. Is like with Superman, everybody always forgets that he's an actual freaking alien. We're like, well, what did you think? Yeah, he's a human, but he's still a freaking alien. Just not, because he looks yeah. human, like, yeah, doesn't mean he's not an alien. Yeah, it's it's a very done, well done, and Bill Nye, he's amazing in everything. Yes. He's, he has a very comedic moment when you finally get to see him, I think, at the end of episode one. Yeah. yeah. Ep- end of episode one that spills in the beginning of two. And mm-hmm. he has a very, very funny line and the only the way that Bill Nye could deliver. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. Wait, we're talking about Bill Nye the Science Guy, right? No. No. Oh, okay. I was about to say. No. Yeah, yeah Bill Nye the Science Guy. No, it was... Uh, that's what was the only thing Davy Jones. Of. Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I heard Bill Nye in the only <laughs> thing I could hear is Bill Nye the Science Guy. Well, it's Bill Nye-E. I don't know yeah. if you pronounce the Y. But that's, but that's how they the pronounce it, Bill Nye. Bill Nye. So yeah, I'm yeah. assuming it's British and you don't pronounce the Y. I know. They okay. don't pronounce half the letters sometimes. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So, so far, two good shows that you recommend, The Halo. Uh, and yes. And the other premiere of the series that I got to see was a true crime dramatization of... Um, the, the girl from Plainville. Yeah, the girl from Plainville starring Al okay. Fanning. It's going to be on Hulu. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen promos for that already. Yeah. Is that, yeah, I think I have. And it's actually, like, I was so hooked to the story because I kind of know about the story. It's the one where the guy's girlfriend was texting him while he was suicidal and she was like, oh. do it, do it, do it, do oh, okay. it. Drink okay. bleach yeah. or do this. Yeah. yeah. They had an HBO documentary um, yeah, a few remember, years ago yeah. that came out and then... The um the guy that wrote the article was there, and he's actually an executive or consulting producer on the series now. Yeah, and so he was able to answer a couple of questions. And there, people were like, "Did you ever think that this would get to the magnitude that it has? And you know, what made you get involved?" And he was like, "Honestly, they grew up in a town about an hour from where I did, and the kid that killed himself reminded me of my younger brother. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, you know, wow, this guy's the same age as my brother, and like." So it just resonated. This, this with could him. just, yeah. yeah, it really resonated with him. He's like, picked up the story, and like, you know, here it is. You know, a few years later, now it's like HBO documentary. Now it's this, you know, true crime series, and Hulu has really stepped up their like true crime. They have know, like yeah. mini series. They, right. that, they did that other one, um, I, the Gypsy Rose one. I don't remember what the name was with Roseanne Arquette, and. Oddly enough, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to per- butcher her last name. Chloe Savini. I'm going to say Savini, but I think they were saying like Savinier. Savin- Savinier. Savinier or something like know. that. But um, she was there. Elle Fanning was there. Um, yeah, it was It was really... I think they really... I mean, I don't want to say it because, I mean, obviously we didn't know the girl and all I know is from the documentary and shit. I mean, when I saw the f- the documentary, when I had seen the story break originally all those years ago, I was like, that yeah. bitch looks like Elle Fanning with weird eyebrows. Like, that's what that's immediately what I thought. And so when I, the, she came on screen, I'm like, it's just, that's her. It's, like, it's, it's so weird. It's, yes. It's creepy. It's very creepy. The well, whole series is very creepy because she, obviously the story is really like it. it it's uh, it's gross. It's it, a gross yeah, story. It yeah. is gross. And the case like really broke open like, you know, what you can say, how free yeah. is free yeah. speech and like what you can do to assist other people and not get help, you know, like. And she plays her like very like gross too. But that's the whole thing. And that's, the, like, that's the girl, though. Like she plays yeah. her like. That's the because, thing. Like, it's yeah, like the, the whole thing is like she is a very insecure teenage girl. Like yeah. she's horribly insecure. She might have her own mental problems. They allude to that a bit in the show. Yeah, okay. like there's a whole slew of things, and she's obsessed with like this YA young adult like culture, <sighs> like those oh Fault gosh. in Our Stars book. Like, you know, she wanted to have like glee. The, yeah, oh. the Glee. She wanted to have that like teenage romantic like death i think she wanted like it's just a fairy tale like romeo and juliet you thing. know There's say what you romeo will about the reference. emo generation being dramatic but the whole glee generation oh, really gosh. amped yeah, up that whole yeah. i'll kill myself for you like well the emo kids to me always threatened it and were never actually ballsy enough to do it it's like that 
that's what they did to get their attention. No, the emo kids were just feeling their fucking feelings, and yeah. everybody was being mean to them. Yeah. <laughs> like, just it, let them it, kids be upset. Yeah, that's okay. What, that, yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> like, they're, sho- they're being, they're upfront with their emotions. That's why they're emos. It's like I'm emotional, and I want you to listen to me. Exactly. They wanted, just, they need attention. They need a little love. All just right. Feel, just feel your emotions, kids. Feel yes. your feelings, just feel your kids. Feelings. Feel yes. your feelings. But yeah, no, th- if if you like true crime and kind of the the, the whole, and you want to know the story okay, behind see, it. I'm, I'm super intrigued with it just because like, I, like all three of us probably is when everything started coming out about this, I'm like, what the fuck happened and how did this happen? Yeah, I remember, like, how can you tell, like, how can you yeah. take somebody to court over text, Yeah, at you first know? I was like, that's dumb, but then when, like, all the actual text yeah, started everything, coming out, yeah, I was like, everything. oh, shit. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, if she told that motherfucker to drink bleach, like, yeah, arrest that bitch. Like, okay, yeah. never mind, I was wrong. No, and just, and it shows her interactions with the family, like, afterwards, yeah. and how how kind of like she spiraled into this role almost yeah, that she just... took on. But it also shows um, Chloe Sav- Sav- Sivanye. 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 Uh, she plays the mom of Conrad. Col- Con- Con- Conrad. Conrad, yeah. Um, the boy who um, died by suicide. And um, she goes, it, it really explores her guilt and mm. her feelings and her discovery of this, you know, of the text and that whole relationship even because she didn't know much about their relationship going on. Yeah, that's the thing. I think they said they lived like maybe an hour away from each other and it's like the mom was like, oh, I didn't know you guys were close. So like, like you guys were dating? Like, yeah, like, oh, he told me he loved me and she's like, oh, I didn't know you were close. Yeah. And shit like that. And, and like, um, the guy who wrote the article had said that when he had signed on to do it, he was so adamant that they be respectful yeah. of every aspect of everything because he lived in that town while he was writing the article, while yeah. he was doing all the research. He was like, I would go to work out at the gym and Conrad's dad would be, you know, a couple treadmills yeah. down. So he was like, it's very respectful the way it's done. We explore, you know, Conrad's life, not only his death, but his life. And yeah. All that kind of stuff. So I'm excited to see where the rest of the series goes. But it's bad shit crazy. And, and I, I want to say that, like, when you say, like, it's a recreation or a dramatization or something that, like, true event, like, it's not done cheesily either. Okay. Like, yeah. Because I feel like if you say those words, I'm like, I, I think of the cheesy unsolved mystery ones they would do. It's not the or Lifetime like, movie. Or, like, a Lifetime movie. Yeah, it's exactly. It's not the Lifetime or what is yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, the Hallmark movies or stuff like that. No. Like, no the one that I'm thinking of also is the ones that do them terribly is those real reels. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Like real yeah. death ones. Yeah, where they yeah. recreate Those. the deaths of like yeah. this is how this celebrity died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very well done. Like she said, very respectful to like people that actually live through it. And I think, and but Elle Fanning, like, there's this one scene where she is acting, acting out this part, and it's like you're like this bitch is deranged. Like you really <laughs> sell into yeah. it because you're like she does a very good job. It's it I'm could be this. it could be a scene that is done so cringeworthy, right? Mm. It could it, it just you know the scene I'm talking about. Paul. I don't want to ruin it, but and I was just like watching it. I'm like, no, that bitch crazy. Like this and is just this crazy is, all over it. And this is a Hulu series. Yes, this okay. one's a Hulu series. It's called The Girl from Plainville. It stars Elle Fanning. Oh, another thing to look forward to. March 29th. Yes, the first episode. Um, well, I think the whole series premieres march 29th on hulu oh so it's doing that thing so it's dropping everything at once right i believe so yeah okay so if you have nothing to do on march 29th there's a series to binge yeah well, either way you can watch the first one. Oh yeah true and then, yeah and it's a it's an exploratory thing it, it covers years of the story so okay. because i think it took a couple of years till she actually oh, went well, to trial yeah, yeah. Till, and throughout the trial and stuff like that but yeah it's very interesting um another it's not horror or sci-fi really but it, we're gonna call it fantasy fantasy Fantasy. It's a fantasy adventure. It's Uh-oh. very meta and it's bananas. Uh-oh. But Paul and I got to go to the premiere of this with Nicholas Cage and Pedro Pascal. And Pedro Wait, Pascal tell- is not very tall. No. I thought he was going to be taller. Man? He's I he's about know. the same height as Nick Cage, I think. No, Nick Cage was taller than him. Is he like Nick Cage like 6'3"? Yeah, Nick Cage is like 6'2", 6'3". I think Pedro is maybe 5'10"-ish, okay. mm-hmm. somewhere around there. Uh, we get to see the unbearable weight of massive talent with Nicolas Cage starring as Nicolas Cage. <laughs> At I, this no. point in his career, does he just not play okay, anything no. other than himself? Okay, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, this okay movie. first of all, let me just say, it is a fictionalized version of Nick Cage. Okay. Okay, so in this movie, he plays himself, but he's playing like a struggling actor that's like severely in debt i mean obviously okay. he's not in debt anymore and shit like that but they're playing up that he's going through a divorce he has this teenage daughter and he kind of has a little bit of a drinking problem 
And his agent is played by um, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris. And he's he's only in like two or three scenes, but he's hilarious as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so he's trying to get this movie part, and he gets you know he gets the rejection. Um, so he tells him, "Look, this guy wants you to come and just hang out with him, and he'll pay us a million dollars." But he lives in Spain, right? So he's like, "Okay, fine, whatever. I need the money, or they're gonna kick me out of this place. You know, I owe money here and there." So. He takes the money and ends up being Pedro Pascal, who is like this um, Spanish drug lord. Uh Uh-oh. And he flies there on his private jet. And when he lands, these two CIA agents, played by Tiffany Haddish, and I don't remember the other dude's name, but they are hilarious together. Ike Barinholtz. They are hilarious together. They bicker with each other like brother and sister. And their their parts are very funny. Their parts are so small, too, but they are fucking hilarious. There's a ton of cameos in this movie they're so all let me guess, the CIA agents want him to play informant so the CIA agents basically recruit him to get information because there's a kidnapped girl and they mm. need to know where she is and it has the whole deal with this, all this other stuff so basically he goes there and he's trying to play double agent but at the same time like Pedro Pascal is just like the biggest Nick Cage fan he yeah. is a huge Nick Cage fan and the whole thing is is that he wants to make a movie and he wants Nicolas Cage to star yeah. in it. He wrote a movie, but then they, they end up being like, let's just make a movie together. I know you said this is supposed to be fictionalized, but why do I fi- figure that this actually wasn't too far fetched from actually happening? Oh, no. the, the it, it plays like a buddy comedy, and it is yeah. amazing. But, but still, though, it's Nicolas Cage, so everything okay. you guys describe about him Oh, and he comments on broke. the Nicolas Cage-ness throughout the whole, the whole thing. No, he, he, he takes no... Uh, he takes no offense to anything. He pot shots himself. Mm-hmm. Like he definitely I don't want to spoil the other part of it, but he definitely makes fun of his younger self a lot yes. in this movie. Like so there, much. there are nothing that are off limits. And there are so many like like sm- small scene recreations and they do lines like mm-hmm. from his old movies and like if they do it con is just, it's over for me. It is just hilarious. No, trust me. You have to you see have it. to see this you movie. It is it. so funny. Okay. Like whether you're a Nick Cage fan or just a casual Nick Cage fan, he brings up fucking guarding tests. That's all oh I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. He bring he takes shots oh, at all of it. Okay, mm-hmm. all okay. All, all of it. Of it. Trust me when I say. Sold when it was Nick Cage. Trust me when I say he makes fun of young Nick Cage okay. mm-hmm. a, a lot. lot. Okay. He also makes references to his career over the past like ten years. He makes like there's nothing off there's limits. There's a Mandy okay. reference. Okay. Say uh, here, there, here's, there's a Mandy reference. There's there's a comment on how many films he's made over the past couple of years. Here's where we'll cement it. Does he shit on himself for Superman? They don't mention no. Superman. Ooh, oh, because yeah. if he would have, then that would have been no, so awesome. No, but the other hand is Pedro Pascal, who is fucking hilarious. Yes. I didn't even know he was hilarious until this movie. He plays yes. physical comedy. He, he does, does quick little, like, thi- he's especially, hilarious. Yeah, especially when you think, like, this guy's the fucking Mandalorian, and then well, you see him doing all these things, with, like, like you said, the physical comedy, and, like, it is just hilarious. I'm not surprised with that, because he's got a lot of range. I don't know if you guys saw the Wonder Woman 1984. No, we didn't get around to but Wonder But the Wonder character Woman. he plays in that was just, like... St- completely out of left field for me like yeah. how he played it so it's like holy crap so now i can hmm. see if pedro pascal is capable now i can see that he's capable of playing a comedic role because yeah. he was just the character he played in that was just kind of like an over the top con man salesman type yeah. of thing and i don't know if he was intending to be serious but it came off very comedic to me and it's just <laughs> like i've no like you know pedro pascal is the mandalorian i know him as um from game of thrones Oh, was he in Game of Thrones? Yeah, he was in Game of oh. Thrones. He's the guy who had his head popped. He was the uh, the Viper. I forget. Uh, Oberyn Tar. Damn it! You're speaking Greek. Too. Yeah, we. But don't still, know. He, he was in Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's what I know him. So when I saw Pedro Pascal do something other than that, I had no idea he actually had a regular accent. I always thought he had that. Like the, I don't want not Hispanic, but the Central American, South American accent to where he has. You can tell he's from Latin descent. Yeah. yeah. But I d- had no idea that he's born and bred American. Yeah, and he's apparently, uh, we did the Q&A because they had a Q&A afterwards. And Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal okay. were both there. Wait. Nick Cage was wearing a plaid Wait. suit, a yeah. red Ooh. plaid <laughs> suit. Like the Brawny Man's shirt, yes. but it was oh a full on Head suit. to toe plaid. Okay, okay. Mm. So I do have to say, all throughout Austin, right, they they put saran wrap around the pillars around the um, convention center and people yeah. put posters or stickers. I put a bunch of scary nerd shit up there, like all of our stickers and everything. Uh-huh. There was a guy that made this full like 11 by 15 thing 
and it had Nick Cage's face on it, and it said, "I'm your biggest fan, Nick Cage," and it had a phone number on there. Oh, and I was damn. like, I don't know if this is like a promo for the movie or whatever, but I go and wait in the near the red carpet thing, and the guy actually was there, and he was like, "Yeah," and he called me, and we talked for a little bit. What? So then we're we're doing the Q and A, and the guy who's the biggest Nick Cage fan, you know, he's walking yeah. around with his poster yeah. and all that. He goes to ask a question, and uh, what did he say? Pedro Pascal was like, uh, he's like, you're the guy that's trying to take my number one spot as a Nick Cage fan. Yeah. <laughs> so he was giving that kid shit because he was like, because he's like, uh, they were asking him about the movie, like, you know, their dynamic with each other. And Nick Cage was like, some of that shit in the movie is literally just me and Pedro just, just talking about yeah. movies together. Like, yeah, just being apparently fans of movies. They were talking about, I have a clip. Um, from the Q&A where they bonded over Spanish horror and J-horror. Apparently that's oh. what they talked about. Yeah, like they, he was saying like we would just, you know, give each other movies to watch. He's like, we were filming and it was like a Halloween weekend. He's yeah. like, I'm like, all right, you go watch this movie. I'll go watch this movie and we'll come talk about them. And the whole film is a love letter to movies in general. It like, is. It, especially like, to like Nicolas Cage movies, but more so to just movie making and the movies in general, like the love of that action-y kind of thrilling feeling is, at the movie. It is very like... A, like an inward look at film in general because then they, okay. when they especially when they're trying to make their own film like they talk about it they're like well i want a story that has this and yeah like, no, well, we have to have this like it's hilarious and yeah nicholas cage it, i mean he sells the whole thing because he plays himself and he plays himself in the best nicholas cage fashion and it's almost okay. like he's doing a nick cage impression of himself it really like, is while oh you're gosh. watching the movie and during the q a the director was like yeah when we started watching this we never met nick cage we didn't know who he, we didn't know him like we just decided this is what we were gonna do and it somehow all worked out i'm like jesus christ i think he said like we'd asked him and he said no we asked him a couple times and he's like and he's like i finally i sent him this long like email and like nick cage was like it was a beautiful email and i thought all right well let me take a look at this first okay. and and someone was like is it weird reading a part that's you like written about you that you have to play he's like you have no idea yeah <laughs> <laughs> but nick cage is a weird guy so he made, he made it work it's all right <laughs> He's got to th- be a weird dude. I he think it's funny it. because in film school, we watched Being John Malkovich. And then we had a discussion, like, if you were to remake this movie, who would you do? And we were like, Nick Cage. And now, like, this is almost kind of like Being John Malkovich. Well, that's what I was about without, to say. Yeah. Without, you know, the sci-fi, you know, closet shit. That's what that. I was about to ask when you said he's playing himself in, like, a meta meta version of that. I'm like, so kind of like Being Malkovich. Being John Malkovich, kind it of kind of is, and but okay. it's just it's so much more hilarious. It is, okay. it's, it's and it's, it's fun to be fun. There's no message. Yeah, really. there is no message. Okay. Okay. If you want a movie it's with no, yes. if you want a that's, movie that's with no message that doesn't you know even like have a hint of a message, this is your fucking movie. Yes. If you it's just want to go and laugh your ass off. It's just this Nick is Cage a movie to watch. Nick Cage. Okay, I can't yeah. wait until it comes out and we can watch it on edibles because we were in Austin and it's not legal there. We couldn't have marijuana. <laughs> so is this movie or straight to streaming? It's a movie. It, a movie. It's, yeah, it's debuting okay. in theaters, I believe, soon. I think in the next few weeks. Well, isn't the whole point of South by Southwest is to build hype for stuff that's coming out yeah. soon? Yeah, so like X is coming out this Friday, yeah. and we just saw it on uh, Sunday night. Okay, it comes out April 22nd in okay. theaters. So yeah, so next month. So everything's either this month in March or next month in April. Yes, but seriously, if you've ever been a Nick Cage fan at any point in your life, go see this Any movie. Nick Cage movie. Any Nick Cage movie. If you, if you, you like any Nick Cage movie ever, or if you just can think of any Nick Cage from the 80s on to now that you oh like, that would be mm-hmm. funny to see. There's something in there for everyone. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to now. It's and it's a fun fucking time. It's a fun ride. It really takes you back to those eighties like buddy comedy movies. When they made movies for no other fucking reason than just to make movies. Yeah. And they didn't care about, you know, making money. This is purely I mean, this movie's gonna make money just because it's so much fun and it so pokes much fun, fun at itself and it pokes fun at like, you know, film in general, but at the same time, like you said, just being a love letter to film mm-hmm. at the same time. So it's like this movie it was just made for pure fun, and I think that's I w- why it's going to succeed. I was sold when you said Nick Cage playing Nick Cage. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's so good. All right, should we get to X now? Okay, so now let's get to the horror movies. It's the horror movies. Let's do it. All let's right. do it. Um, you're going to feel uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. It made me more uncomfortable than any other horror movie has ever made me. Are we talking and about X? X. Yes. There was a scene, and I've been watching horror movies since I was way too young Don't to be watching horror movies. Scene. I'm not. I'm not spoiling any scene. But there was a scene, and I have never said I would rather be dead during a scene. 
But there was a scene where I was like, nope, I would rather right. be dead and than live through that. And you have to watch that. this scene for quite a while. It's okay, intense so. and it makes you uncomfortable and everyone was uncomfortable and okay. see it in the theaters to be uncomfortable with everyone okay. else. Now, what is X about? Okay. Uh, porn. <laughs> do you want to do it? Or you, want me to do it? <laughs> you can do it. Okay. So um, I don't know anyone's name except okay. for Mia Goth and uh, Jenny or Jenna Ortega. Jenna Ortega and then and Kid, Kid Cuddy, Brittany Snow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we know mm-hmm. most of them except for the Martin the Henderson. One dude. Martin I think. Henderson. That's yeah. the guy's name. Okay. Who's from New Zealand? He the is. Way. He was in the ring. Yeah. He was the guy that okay. played the dad of the little boy in the ring. I guess okay. he's fucking from New Zealand because he mm-hmm. talked with his New Zealand accent, and even the other art, uh, even the other actors were talking about how he just kept his Texas accent the whole time. <laughs> and then Brittany Snow's like, "Holy crap! I didn't even think about that." Like, yeah, yeah, Kid Cudi like, was like, "I didn't know he was from New yeah, Zealand at all." He was like, "Yeah, during what? lunch he would just be talking to us in his Texas accent, and we just thought he, oh wow, he's from Texas." Like, okay, he's like, "Yeah," and he starts talking his New Zealand accent. And we're like, "What the hell?" He's like, "What the fuck happened?" I, yeah, because I didn't know he was from New Zealand either. But yeah, it's funny. so okay. it's about a group of Texans who um, so that are guy, trying to break in to the porn yeah. industry. He owns a strip club and Brittany Snow and I don't know what her other name is, Mia Goth's character. Mm-hmm. They both play strippers and they decide, you know, this is like the late 70s and 79. And this, okay, the, so the rumblings yeah. of VHS are, are happening. And he's yeah. like, we need to make a porno and get it out. He's like, because then he says a line that's like, well, then every horny fucker can have us in their living room or you know, something like that. So yeah. he's, you know, big Texas idea. So they go out into the country and they're in some shit little town. Okay. And they rent this. I don't even know if it's a town. It's just like yeah. a rural. Like you see yeah, those houses but, on the side of the highway, and that's okay. what it is. You're gonna you're gonna be reminded a lot of Texas Chinese yeah. Massacre. I, I was mean, about to say when you. Well, said- I mean, it's it's Texas background in the middle of nowhere because they show basically um, this little gas station on the way where they pick up some stuff, and then they go to this guy's like farm. There's and- a van. Yeah, and they're in a van. Yeah. Wait, 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 you're going to a farm to film a porno? They go and they rent like this, um, like it's there's like two or three technically like a boarding house. It's like yeah. a, it's like basically like a little side house on this big farm. Yeah. And it's uh, they have a non-existent budget because they're you know yeah. adult he's a, entertainers. He's a sleazy, yeah. you know. He owns a I think he owns a strip club next to like the shipping yard in Houston or some shit. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they give you that kind of idea. That's the kind of budget we're working with on okay. this thing. So it's like it's it's not like a cabin, but it's like a little house, right? And yeah. they all have rooms. So then they they shoot there, and then they sneak some shots in the in the barn, of, yeah. you know, because it basically is like we're gonna make this porn. It's called the Farmer's Daughters, and you know we're gonna film it here, <laughs> um, and you know that that's their whole thing. So they film most of it, and then shit starts happening. Shit happens. Yeah, but you will feel like you've seen this. Like like we've said, it's so reminiscent of um, Chainsaw, obviously. Well, you said that when you said little small Texas rural town, like what more can you think of? Yeah, but no. You can't it's, help but think of it. It also, yeah. when you watch it, though, it's not just Texas Chainsaw that it brings you back to because it's like he adds colors and tones and themes in there that'll also just give you like 1980s horror. So like you're getting you yes you are getting the Texas chainsaw of it all but like broader like okay. you're getting the the Americana that was always thrown in our faces and those kind of like roadside things and right. you know you're getting more of like she wants to be an aspiring filmmaker she wants to get out there and like you know she wants to have people love her so you're you're getting a broader sense of like America almost. Now, do we Especially have in the early late seventies? Yeah. Early 80s. Is it safe to say we have a new slasher or no? Oh, oh it is yeah. a slasher. Slasher, it is a slasher for sure. To the core. Buckets of gory blood. as fuck. Okay. And brutal. Okay. So brutal. You okay, so you don't have to think. You don't really have to like. There's no twist to really solve. Okay. Like once it gets going and you see like what's happening, then you just go for the ride. Okay. Yeah. And then you're kind of wondering like, okay, how's everyone going to meet their demise and this and that, right? So there's really nothing, like I said, it, it's not like, I don't want to call it like a mindless slasher, but it was okay. like it, mindless in the sense that you're not thinking about anything. You're just watching. You're just watching everything ride. play out. And it is gory as hell. And there are some violent, violent parts to it. So if you want gore, a lot you want of sex. Violence, okay, so we got sex, slasher. gore, violence. Okay. If you okay. like all that and you don't want a story or a preach, you're going to watch this. There's also a ton of comedic moments. There, okay. it, This movie is wildly funny. I mean, yeah, you can't have a movie about making a porno without having some comedic moments between the dialogue and everyone. Yeah. And porn. Like, mm. porn porn. Like, I was like, whoa, I was, there's okay. a lot of porn I know, in this. I knew they were going to make a porn, and I knew that, you know, there may have been some boobs, and I'm like, I was surprised at how much boobs we actually saw. Yeah. Okay. I was surprised. Yeah. It, you, it's definitely like a 70s film. Do you even say, like, like I it didn't felt like think that. Britney Snow was going to 
be oh, topless. So she's, so she's naked in it. Yeah, like they do porn. Like Kid Cudi gets pretty naked in it. Like naked porn. That's like, funny that Kid there's Cudi thrusting. Is there's thrusting. Oh, oh. <laughs> there's, this, it's yeah. There's there is sex and blood and mm. gore. Yes, okay. it okay. is. Yes, okay. and that's kind of um. We did the Q and A with um that one as well. And Ty West, uh, Ty West was saying. That you know, porn and horror have always been other forms yeah, of outcasts. entertainment, yeah. Yeah. and that's kind of you know the theme of this movie with the you know the chick. She wants to be a sex symbol. She wants to be okay. that other, you yeah. know. But it's also and then we just said this was like the love letters. The South by Southwest was just a love letters whole film festival because okay, okay. Ty West did like there's so much horror movie homages and you know uh nods and just it's so fun because it doesn't rip anything off it's almost like little easter eggs of like just nod little nods of easter eggs inside that you the little quick things that you kind of like oh okay i know yeah look at that kind of thing yeah the thing that i think i'm more sold on than anything is the fact that angie said that she's never been more uncomfortable in a movie um Mm -hmm. you're gonna say i'm gonna trust trust me when i say you're gonna say the same thing and when you're done you're gonna text me be like oh my god see that's what that's what you were talking about see that's the one thing is like when somebody says that it's like okay now my interest is peaked now it's like okay i have to see this just to see if i felt the same way the whole we got to experience it in a whole theater full of people which is amazing and i think i suggest everybody experience it that way when i when we get done with this i'm gonna have to look that up to see if they're playing it here locally or not they are i believe it comes out it comes out on friday there are people that are people that are gonna see it thursday night so yeah Yeah. but no the whole theater was like oh oh my god what is happening right now and like the gas and And i do just having that collective experience of being so uncomfortable together was a whole new experience for me i haven't been that that (laughs) uncomfortable in a theater ever um but it was thrilling it really was because it's it's such a moment of tension release okay okay because what comes after that is is like a, a beautiful crescendo of <laughs> of feeling. You know what horror movies are best at? They get you in okay. there and they make you feel. Horror movies are supposed to make you horny, make you scared, and make you think. And this one does all three. Okay, okay, I'm. But I don't think that. it doesn't really make you think. I think it does. I'm gonna say it doesn't make you think like you're, okay, you're not trying to figure anything out. Oh no, that's it, not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm um, saying the overall okay. message I, of I it. I do makes have to say think. that. Um, for people that don't like jump scares, there are some jump scares in this movie, but they're not cheesy jump scares. Okay. Yeah. I have to say that I actually, like, they were practical kind of jump scares to me. And yeah. not like just, No oh. gratuitous jump scares here, See, folks. With, me with jump scares is, oh, I don't get, I don't get got by them. Because it's one of those things, it's like, you know, you're yeah. going to, you're going to. You know it's getting built towards that, and you're like, okay, they're going to do a jump scare here and there. There were a few that um, I did see coming in this one. I was like, okay, this is the logical yeah. next step. Yeah. But a lot of it was just because of the whole beat of we're the, the yeah. movie. There, there so I was like, that, there, th- it's not going to be a slow thing. Like You know something yeah, next is happening. There are some that actually just catch you by surprise just okay. the way the movie progresses. Because it's, it's been forever. I don't remember the last time that the movie actually got me with a jump scare. It's be, It's been a while. Yeah, I I highly recommend this movie. It is an, a weird, off the wall, fun horror movie, and I really like. If you are a fan of eighties horror movies, okay. you're gonna fucking love this movie. All right, like I said, when we get done with this, I'm looking it up and seeing it because we. I'm gonna have to go watch this movie. This it's weekend. amazing. I highly, I highly recommend. It's it. yeah, you, okay. you'll enjoy it. Okay, so that was X. Uh, what other? What I didn't other, see other any ones? other horror movies. Did you? What did you see? The only other thing we have to talk about is uh, everything. Everywhere, yeah, and I didn't get to see that one either. Everything, everywhere, all at once. That's sci fi as well. This is okay. Oh my god, okay. So, first and foremost, what's this movie about? Okay, so the movie is called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and it stars Michelle Yao. And she was in Crazy Rich Asians, and I know she was in uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And besides those, I know she's a huge star in, um, you know, the Asian film market. and her name um, sounds familiar. She was also a ballerina and a martial arts expert, yes. correct? Yeah, I'm pretty sure like she, she's a yeah, Renaissance woman. She's like she's like like hugely famous okay. in in Asian countries. Right? She's like Jackie Chan. And so she's now like this is like people are excited cuz like this is like her first like starring role in like a major like US picture. Okay. Um, this was produced by the Russo brothers. Oh, um, this is another A twenty four film. Okay, Jamie Lee Curtis stars. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is in. She's uh, she. I wouldn't say she stars. She's okay. definitely supporting. But okay. okay, so she is a woman that was from 
China and she immigrates to America against the advice of her father who plays who's played by James Hong who's fucking amazing in this movie um so her husband asks her to marry him obviously they're dating and the father's like no if you leave you're not my daughter she goes to America and she opens a laundromat with her husband then has a daughter now here we are you know the daughter's like yeah. you know 20 something years old college age right her husband is played by I'm going to probably butcher this but he Hu Kwan who is short round and was also in the Goonies <laughs> yes and People are also very excited because this is like his first like starring role in over twenty years of acting. Holy crap! Um, I know he was in that um, that um, that uh, Netflix movie where it was like um, I don't remember. It was a Ohana means family. Yeah. Ohana, I think mm. it was just called Ohana. Okay. okay. Um, he was in that, but I think he had like a small role in that. Whatever. Um, but he plays the husband, and he's a very like reserved kind of yeah. you know mousy guy, or whatever. So the whole story is said that like. She kind of thinks back at that moment like, God, you know, I wonder what my life would have been like if I hadn't married him or if I'd done this or done that or blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. Um, they're having some trouble with the IRS with their laundromat. Uh -oh. So the whole thing is they have to go to get to this appointment to try and figure out their taxes with their IRS agent, who's named Deidre Brodidra, okay. who's played by Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays like this schlubby like IRS agent. Like if you've seen the trailer, you'll see like she's got like fat pads and like, you know. Schlubby yeah. like, is the best way I could put it. But um, while they're going to this meeting, she is visited by an alternate universe version of her husband who inhabits his body and explains that there's an omnipotent being traveling all the multiverses and killing her in every single universe in order to destroy the whole multiverse. And she's the only one that can stop them. Why have I heard this premise before? It sounds like Jet Li's the one. I don't know. I never saw the one. It sounds like the one. Um, <laughs> but... She doesn't believe him, obviously, until shit starts getting crazy and yeah. starts happening. And then what happens after that is the craziest fucking hilarious. Like, it, it is so much fun. As much as I loved the Nick Cage movie, I love this movie almost twice as much. Mm. This movie is so much fun. There's so many ridiculous shit that happens in this movie. Because you get to not only explore and have these actors play multiple versions of themselves. Yeah. I'm going to say, I wrote this in the review that's coming out tomorrow. Um, you get to see he Hu Kwan beat some, like, beat a group of security guards with nothing more than a fanny pack. What? Like, he does martial arts in this movie. <laughs> so he plays three different versions of himself. Um, the main character, Michelle Yao, she plays, um, I think her name's Eleanor. She plays multiple different versions of herself. Not only do you get to see multiple versions of these people, because they teach her how to tap into, like, the other versions of herself, like their skills. So she gets to inhabit some it's of their like skills. The um, and not only do you get to see the multiple versions of people, you get to see some of the multiple universes and some of the weird shit that those multiple universes have, mm. in, to store, have in store for you. Um, this movie has a lot of also like martial arts action. Like a lot. I do know so it one. Is, it's not necessarily a spoiler, but I do know that there are dildo fingers in one. No, 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 no. Hot dog fingers. Hot, hot dog, dog fingers. fingers. All I'm gonna say is hot dog fingers, and Randy Newman voices a raccoon. What the fuck? When you see the raccoon, you hear him. This that is Randy Newman. Oh my god. And I don't want to spoil anything, but there is so much action. There is so much comedy. Like. Um, this movie makes you think it makes you laugh like it, it does kind of have a message but again it's not preachy okay. it's just you see the characters and who they are and you get their real emotion and then you think like it gets to a point where you're like you're looking at this at these people at their most like human ness human form at their most like you know humanity of the yeah. of each person between the you know the, the main characters because that you know on the backdrop of all this shit happening you know, they're maybe potentially going through a divorce and stuff like okay. that. So it's like you have all this real human shit and then you throw all of this multiverse shit with all the craziness that comes along with it and the fucking hot dog fingers and Randy <laughs> Newman and like it is the most ridiculous movie. But I have to say it's done so well that it's blended so well that you don't feel like. Like, you know, sometimes you'll watch a movie, you're like, okay, that was good, but if they maybe amped up the comedy a little more, yeah. or they tried to put too much comedy into it, yeah. this is done so well, and it's so evenly blended that it's another one that you just, you go for the ride, and you just fucking enjoy it. All and right. there, so there's action, if you love martial arts fighting, because there is, like, they have, like, 
I don't. They're like pretty famous, I guess, in uh, Asian. But like, there's like a martial arts team, like these three. I don't. I think two of them are brothers, and another um, the guy that's on their team. But like, they're like crazy, like like well known, and like they're in the movie, and like okay. it's just like yeah. There's there's martial arts action. There's you know fantasy. There's adventure. There's science fiction, and above all, it's all just wrapped in a big, huge fucking blanket of comedy. Okay, it's comedy, 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 and like. It's and just so round. much fun. And, and, uh, that's the thing that's the Short round out of beats all of it. a group of guys with a fanny pack. And also the guy from Big China, Big Trouble in Little China. James Hong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's in everything. He get, he, I'm, just, I'm not going to spoil it, but he, he fights as well. <sighs> and he's very old. Yeah. He's very old now. He fought in Wayne's World? He fights in a wheelchair. Okay. He's, he's he was very old in Wayne's World. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a wheelchair in the whole movie. So he's like, he fights in a wheelchair. Okay. okay. But yeah, it is... Um, I, I literally like I everyone should see this movie. It is yeah, I heard gonna, the, I heard there were multiple standing ovations for it. Okay, so. it uh, it is so good. Like I just can't, I didn't see anything bad at South by Southwest. Okay, that's see that's the one thing that is good about it. Like usually, that's the like, like it's like the thing you want to happen the most is like you go to something like that and you watch nothing but good movies. Yeah, because the worst in theaters with other, other people, people. Well, like well, with the other people. film people, no. other movie lovers. To me, going to like a film festival like that, and you go and you see a movie that somebody worked really super hard on, and it's nice to see that they were all good. And the one thing that would suck is if you went and you'd be like, "That movie absolutely sucked." I couldn't imagine going to a movie that sucked, and then having like the like we would did to the premieres, right? Some yeah. of the cast and the crew were there, and then I'm like, you know, this movie. Nope, I didn't like that. Would, that would be yeah. Like, yeah. That, that would be terrible because I know they've done it before where they've had South by Southwest movies. They got. Movies that that got screened there that were terrible, and it's like, how did nobody not call this out? See, I mean, you know, maybe in the beginning, you know, there's growing pains. There's there's this and that that could you know prevent you from the once you make a name for yourself, yeah. and, and obviously they've made you know a huge name for themselves yeah. at this point. So you get like you know best choice or first choice because like this was directed by two guys, um, both named Dan. Actually, they just they they just call themselves the Daniels. Like directed by Daniels is what it says. Um, they did a lot of music videos, and they've actually shown music videos at South by Southwest before yeah. and they've won awards there. And they were asking in the Q&A, like, how did you guys come up with some of the stuff? They're like, this was over 10 years that we were just kind of putting a little bit here and there together. And then they were like, basically, we took all the crazy shit that some of the musicians like Rihanna that we worked with yeah. said no to in their music videos. And we're like, all right, we'll throw that in the fucking we'll movie. You know? um, I can safely tell you people were fucking howling with laughter. Like, okay. the whole, whole theater just... It felt so good to be in a movie theater with a bunch of people and everyone just laughing their asses off. That was off. my favorite part of South by Southwest. And if anybody out there ever gets the chance to go, and I highly recommend it, because you get to sit in a theater with fans of film. Yeah. Other fans, like, you're excited to be there. They're excited to be there. And you get to watch a movie together. And it's just so see, fun. See, that's the one thing I miss, like, with some movies. Like, if you're a true fan of something and watching it with those people. Because, like, I mean, I like, I mean, we love horror movies. But you know that there's just some people that go there just to watch. Because it's like, oh, it's a movie and everybody's going to watch it. But to actually be, be surrounded by the people who love the same thing that you love. Yeah. That's the one thing I think I've only experienced maybe once or twice in my lifetime. And it's, compl it, like, you said, it's like a euphoria thing. Because, like, it you is. both... Like everybody in there appreciates I can, it. I can safely say that X, everything, everywhere, all at once, yeah, and the unbearable weight of massive talent. Those are three movies that you need to see with a group of people. You need to experience you them. Need collectively. to experience that collectively in a theater with a lot of people and just have that collective, like just moments of whole, like pure fucking hilariousness in in those two movies. And X is just pure. Gore and fucking uncomfortableness and just mm, tits blood, and ass. tits, ass. Like just there's <laughs> there's so much elements in it that it's just there's a shadow of a dong. So fun, like yeah, there is you, a dong. There's there's there's, there's, there's penai. Oh, okay. So I did see one more that I just remembered. Well, that penis. Okay. Yeah, I saw one more penis that I remember. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Um, um, I got to see bodies, bodies, bodies. bodies yes, bodies, that's bodies. right. I forgot about that. I got to see that last well, not last night, the night before. I don't. Know. I didn't. I don't know what Whenever day it is. Don't remember I anymore. didn't know what day it was for like a whole week at South by Southwest. <laughs> I just knew that I needed to be at this movie at this time. Um, okay. Bodies, bodies, bodies is um, Pete Davidson is in it, and he's only he's only in a he's in a kind of small part. And I I I won't spoil it, but just to say that he dies first. So 
That's so how like Suicide Squad. Short. That's how short, you know, like, you know, his role Never is. Su- Pete Davidson is Suicide Squad, yeah. Yeah, he was on the second um, one. Yeah. So it starts off, and I don't remember anyone's fucking name, and it's not on IMDb yet because <laughs> I don't even know when the movie's coming out, but um, this girl and her girlfriend are going to this friend's, like, um, family's mansion in Florida somewhere, and they're having a hurricane party because, you know, what they're the f- all like, you got to go inside. And it's like, all right, let's go to this. They're going to this guy's house, Pete Davidson's house. Yeah. They... All these people play like rich, bratty 20-somethings, right? So it's Pete Davidson's parents' house, and they all go, and it's this big mansion, you know, and they, this girl and her new girlfriend that she's only been dating for, you know, like six weeks or something, they say. Um, so this is the first time that this girl's going to meet all of her friends. And they go, and they just start hanging out, and there's a lot of drugs and drinking, and they um, just basically take turns, like taking shots at each other about stuff. Uh-huh. So they start to get bored or whatever, and you know everyone's doing coke basically and drinking and just all this shit, right? And they decide they want to play this game that they've all played since they were kids, and they call it bodies, bodies, bodies. What they do is you get a piece of paper, and whoever has the X on it, you're the murderer. Okay. So you turn the lights off, and everyone scatters, and in the dark, the murderer has to go and like tap someone. So it's like hide and seek. Well, yeah, it's kind of like hide and seek, but then that person has to just lay down and pretend they're dead. And then when someone finds them, they have to scream out bodies, bodies, bodies. And they turn the lights on and they try and figure out who the murderer is. So like Clue? So it's kind of like Clue, but it's kind of like a a silly version of like hide and seek and Clue together. Mm -hmm. So what happens is Pete Davidson's character ends up getting murdered. And they spend the whole time trying to figure out which one of them is the actual fucking murderer. (laughs) And then the lights go out because it's a fucking hurricane. And somebody dies again. And then everyone is like, everyone's a suspect. Everyone is like, no one trusts anyone. And then it devolves into this thing where it's like, well, you did this and you did that. And it's like, like they kind of just air out all their fucking dirty laundry and like Mm -hmm. all their friendships are like severely tested because it's like, and his movie is hilarious because it's really a satirical look and it pokes fun at like stupid rich 20 somethings that have, you know, yeah. just that are aimless in life. And it's like they make fun of each other about their drug use and they make fun of each other about, you know, family and this and that. And slowly they start, you know, taking each other out and then until you get to the end and then you figure out what the fuck is going on. Okay. So it's very funny. Um, there is some gore to it. Um, there's some pretty uh, some pretty good uh, violent happenings in the in the film okay um a lot of comedy just because it's i think there's only like six people in the whole thing you know it's like a bunch of girls and you know pete davidson and one other guy that's another girl's boyfriend and the rest are these uh his sister and then you know the other friends that are there um but yeah it's a lot of fun you'll you'll laugh your ass off it's definitely not one that um, you need to go see right away. All right. Um, when it, you know, if it comes out on Blu-ray or once it starts to hit, you know, stuff like that. But if you if you're in for a good time and if you've already seen the other ones we've already, you know, recommended, you'll have a good time. Okay. If you're a fan of horror or you know, kind of those kind of whodunit thrillers kind of thing, you might see the ending coming, especially you know, with Pete Davidson's character being like the kind of you know silly character that he plays. You might see the ending coming, but it's still a fun ride. You'll have a good time with it no matter what. And I really think that, um, a lot, you know, everyone at the theater had a really good time with it as well. So we, you know, go and take a look at it after, you know, but put it four or five on your list after, you know, the ones we've talked about already. All right. I'm going to watch Bitch Ass tonight, so I'll have to tell you how that is. It's about uh, Tony Todd's in it. I think he plays a serial killer. So. Yeah, we have that virtual one to watch. It's still yeah. going on. South by Southwest is still going on. It's a sprawling nah, expansion. Not for the most part. Well, they, it's the music festival Well, now. everything else is still going on, but I think the film is pretty much done. They're going to show a couple of screenings of stuff they've already shown, you know, but I think they had their intermission film party the other night, so it's already, you know, they're... Officially past the halfway point. Yeah, but that was South by Southwest 2022. We had a blast. I got to talk to Jamie Lee Curtis for like 12 seconds. I was going up the stairs as she was coming down, and I asked her real quick um, how like how fun was it to play the character? She plays and everything, everything yeah. all at once. And she was like, so much fun, so freeing. Because she plays, there's no way to describe it, but like a schlubby IRS agent who's like a lonely person and like, you get to feel for her character, but mm. she also plays other versions of herself, herself that are very funny as well. Okay. She does a lot of comedy in this movie as well. Like everyone is fucking hilarious in this movie. Like literally everyone is hilarious in this movie. I just really want to watch it now because of short round. 
Yes, I have to see it because of Short Round as well. I cannot wait for the world to see this. Movie. <laughs> like that, I am. So, I have not. I've been telling everyone that'll fucking listen to me. Like every Uber driver we've had in fucking South by Southwest. Like and Uber drivers, you are chatty. Some of you are. <laughs> some of you, you are. are some chatty little Cathys, aren't you? I heard some like four life stories on to and from the airport, man. I was like, mm. I don't know why I'm getting your full life analysis right now, but some, thanks. Some, Somebody needs someone to talk to sometimes, and that's, you know. I guess, but I mean, it was a busy weekend for the Uber drivers. Like, they had people coming in and out. I'm like, how many people are you telling the story to, bud? Well, think about this. What if you got paid for therapy? That's what they're doing. You're getting paid and you get therapy. So why the fuck not, man? You're in my car now. You're going to listen to this. You're so my mom. I'm just going to start laying out my problems next time somebody gives me their problems. I'm like, you, okay, we're going to go tit for tat here because, honey, I got some stories. (laughs) 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 So that was. This This isn't a competition, ma'am. Get out of my car. Yep, that was this episode. We'll be back very soon. We're going to be doing. uh, We should be back to week by week now. We've had a crazy few months. Um, I had COVID. 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 Angie got COVID. We moved. We uh, had to go to South by Southwest. We've been sick. It's like life happens. It's not, it's not what no, it flu. What is the fucking uh, allergy season? Allergy, allergy season, allergy which season. is why we, I sound so sexy and we sultry. We all have <laughs> fucking issues. We're old people. Oh, yeah. we, we are very old people. And I felt that going to South by Southwest. There was like ten o'clock premieres. Were there midnight premieres? And I was like, bitch, I am tired. I need to go to bed. We, uh, yeah, I, no one informed me how hilly Austin was because mm. I was walking places. I'm like, why? Why is there a hill all of a sudden? <laughs> and we got press wild. passes, so we went dressed like press. Like, right, we went yeah, in like, like a jacket and pants. But the there pictures. were some people. I'm like, you were wearing a trash bag. I saw yeah, the okay. pictures. There was one night, Friday night. I was freezing my ass off. It was 37 degrees with an eight mile an hour wind. And I'm oh standing by this bus stop just waiting for my Uber to come because I'm just like I have, you know, your, sh- your my business, shirt, like business casual and then my my sport coat over it. And I'm like, this is not anything. So, yeah, freezing my ass off. And like I did not prepare for uh, the hills because my calves were killing me. Like but ladies. Old. You Austin ladies, y'all are some troopers. Cause I, saw, I'm like, you have a napkin on, and I have jeans uh, and a coat. Say, I don't even hey, know how you are so surviving this. You didn't go to the film party that I do, where I met Jamie Lee Curtis. No, I and didn't. I'm like, that. there were some, there were some chicks there, and I'm like, how are you not fucking frozen right now? Cause I'm like, even if you have underwear under that, you are frozen. Mm-hmm. Cause that no, you must have stepped out of somebody's car. We like, also saw right into a, a shirt on the ground at some point where it looked like Somebody they had lost walked, shirt. walked by something that <laughs> hooked onto it and it just like fell off all the way. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, there's somebody fell out of their clothes. And I don't know what happened. Back to their hotel. I don't know. I don't um, know. But Austin, ladies, you were built um, different, and I applaud you because no, I had jeans and a coat, a full on coat, because I was freezing. It was 37 Angie degrees. Looked like a businesswoman. I saw that picture. Angie was cold and tired. <laughs> you got to dress for the job you want, Saul. Right. Isn't that what they say? Um, yeah. I, so I hope, look out, I hope world. I'm going to be Batman. dressing like, like a garbage cat lady. That's what I, I'm going to be doing. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll be back to our normal programming as far as. I think we're going to do. We're going to do one of the leprechauns next. We're going to do one of the leprechauns. I, I suggested think. the return of the shit holes. Yes. So I think for the rest of March, we're going to do a leprechaun one. And I think we're going to do one of the horrible crow sequels. Which I am so looking forward to because I, I can't wait to do that. Never seen it. So I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. So we haven't decided which leprechaun we're going to do because there are some pretty horrible leprechauns. Oh, yeah. um, but we will be back soon with we'll a leprechaun. Be back. So Next we week. will see you soon. Oh, by the way, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's like, when Day. When you hear this, it'll be St. Patrick's Day. I didn't even realize it. I was looking at the phone, my phone today, and I was like, is motherfucking St. Patrick's Day Listen tonight? to the Leprechaun yeah. episode. We lost a fucking hour uh, Saturday night because fucking daylight savings bullshit. I'm from Arizona, man. I don't do that shit. We don't shit. do this. Which it is was, again why it was freezing because I got off the this. plane and it was way too cold. One fifty nine, and I'm like, and now it's 3 a.m. So fuck me. We got to get up in a few hours. This is daylight savings bullshit. Daylight savings time <laughs> is bullshit. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.